if you have a house or an apartment, you typically have what they call a split system. What do you mean split system? Two parts of it and they're separate places. One is located on the outside of the house and typically you could tell you have a split system by seeing something like that. Anybody seen something like that around their apartment or their house? Yeah. And then somewhere, either in a closet, vertical, or up in the attic, horizontal, there's another part of the system. It's split. And there's lines that run to and from. One line to, one line pushes the fluid back, you know, to and from, inside the house, outside the house. So what you typically do is just as a review, you bring in air somewhere over a filter, push it through the unit where it goes over an evaporator coil. And the evaporator coil cools it, makes it cold air. Then you put it in the ductwork and drop cool air, typically in the ceiling, down into the interior of the house. Hot air rises, cold air sinks, take cold air, dump it into the ceiling. If you ever been up north and they don't have much need for air conditioning, but they have nine months of December, right? Like northern Minnesota. Do they bring in air from the floor? Yes, they don't dump it from the ceiling. Hot air comes in the floor. So they have floor registers. You say, first time you see it, say, well, that's funny. Why are you bringing air in from the floor? Dump it from the ceiling. Well, okay. All right, so you dump cold air in from the ceiling. And then it returns through hallways back and then poop, gets in there. And then that's the loop, air loop in the system. Okay, well, what's happening? We have four components. We had the compressor. Where is the compressor in this split system? Is it inside the house or outside the house? We had the condenser coil. Where is that? Inside the house, outside the house. We had the expansion valve. Where is that located in the house? And then also where the evaporator. I know that we already covered all these, but you know what? I'm trying to prepare you for when you graduate and you go home and somebody asks, what did you do at college? Oh, I got a degree in mechanical engineering. What did you learn in your, you learned something about cars. They're going to latch on to you about every car problem, every car question they ever had. And then if you say, well, I learned something about refrigeration. Oh boy. It's like going to jump on you because they have questions and problems from every level, grandparents all the way down. Why doesn't this work? Why does it cost so much? What do you recommend? Hey, walk outside and look at this for me. Can you figure out what's wrong? Okay, I'm trying to help you here, right? Okay. So what's on the outside of the house? The outside of the house has the compressor and the condenser coil. And the air is brought over the condenser coil. And then the air fan brings it across and shoots it up like that. Right? That's how it's rejecting heat to the outdoor air in a hot summer day. We already talked about the indoor air is passed over the evaporator coil and because the expansion valve, as soon as it expands, it's cold. You keep it really close to the evaporator. The expansion valve is right there, close to the evaporator. All right. We peer into it. Sometimes the compressor sitting in the middle, right under the fan. Sometimes it's sitting off to the side. When that compressor's running, it's loud and noisy. I'm glad it's outside. As well as that fan often is loud and noisy. I'm glad it's outside. Do you think you usually put the, the uh, outdoor unit or the condensing unit near the master bedroom window? No, no, no. You don't put it, in, you put it by the garage or somewhere else right? Okay, because it's loud. Again, you draw the air in and throw it up like that. Now you have these coolant lines. One is bringing refrigerant in, one is taking refrigerant out. This is what the evaporator in a lot of home units look like. It's what they call an upside down V. No, they don't. They call it, the slang is A coil. Why don't they call it the upside down V coil? I don't know. They just don't call it the V-coil, but it looks like a V, doesn't it? And it sits tightly in the duct. And the air comes through the passageway there and does a little shape like that over it. And then it's, it's, it's cooled as it passes over these two sides. Why don't they put it flat? Because moist air, when you cool it, some water will condense. Some wringing out a humidity. And guess what? It's got to drain off. And when it drains off, that water will drain down, drain down. It'll collect on the sides. There are little trays on each side. And then they'll try and catch it in a tube like this and get it out of your house. Do you remember when you were a little kid, you're walking around, hey, mom, 
Dad, we got a problem. Our house is, is leaking water over here on the side. Look at that. There's a little tube dripping. Anybody? Did you do that? No? You're not very inquisitive. Look around your house when you're 8, 10 years old. Hey, we got a problem here. Anyway, so that's the handle, the condensate off of it. So that's your A coil. Let me continue on. So what about this line set? There's two copper tubes that's typically copper, flexible. They can route it and bend it. Okay. And it's what they call the line set. Now here they're showing one is a bare copper tube and it's relatively small in diameter. The other is a larger copper tube with a lot of insulation around it. So it's this big black covered up. Does that make sense? Now, one smaller diameter is carrying liquid or vapor. One larger diameter is either covering liquid or vapor. So what's it flowing in which tube? Liquid has a high density. They have the same mass flow, right? So if I'm sending into the house so many kilograms per second, I'm taking out of the house so many kilograms per second. It's the same flow rate, mass flow rate. It's just that when it's liquid, because of high density, you don't need so much cross-sectional area. So the small diameter is what they call the liquid line. The large is the suction line carrying vapor. All right. So you go back to this and you say, okay, the large line, is it uh, carrying fluid vapor into the house or fluid vapor out of the house? Which way is the large line fluid going? And people will get this all messed up. They really will. So it's actually the suction line is the larger diameter, it's insulated, and it's carrying vapor after or from the evaporator back out of the house to the compressor. That's confusing to a lot of people. And the smaller diameter, bare, typically not insulated, is the liquid line. And it's carrying it after the condenser, it's saturated liquid, typically out of the condenser, high pressure up into the house, into the house, and it's going to the expansion valve, feed the expansion valve. So here is another picture of that, what they call A coil. The liquid line brings the fluid up. It goes real close, a thermostatic expansion valve. I passed around one for air conditioning application here. This has got a bulb on it. You move that bulb so it can sense the temperature of the refrigerant vapor leaving. If it's too hot, it opens up. If it's too cold, it closes. It's a control mechanism. And you have a distributor to here. It's showing you to throw it in the six places, different locations in the evaporator coil so you have a good distribution of heat transfer. The air comes up, passes like that, and is cooled. Any moisture collects and condenses and brings down. So there's my expansion valve or thermostatic expansion valve. Here's a picture of one. And then this is how it's collected in, in a suction header and then your suction line back out. We just play games like this. I don't have a lot of time. I've done it before. I say, hey, can you find the compressor? Like, where's Waldo? You know, where's Waldo? You know, hey, I, I think he's over here. All right. So I think you I've already covered that. Also, play games and questions which which line is short which line is long you know because you remember the components compressor condenser expansion valve evaporator right and it's like these are the two long lines these are the two short lines and so that really helps you the line set is these two lines that's our line set from the outside of the house the inside of the house Bunch more suction line, liquid line. Man, I had too many of these. Professor, let's do them. I got a little more to cover than I think I have time for. That's a split system. Some of you know that you have a house, and maybe it's 2,000 square foot. There's just one air conditioner. When it's on, every room in the house is being cooled, unless you went and shut the vents. Some newer systems, they say, no, let's do this. We'll have a mini split. And we'll put mini units in different parts of the house with one out, the outside condenser unit. And so in this room right here, we'll have a temperature control and we'll be able to handle the temperature better. So you may see more of these in the future. 
uh, where you can actually, with the mini split, easily turn off a room when it's unoccupied. Maybe turn it back on when you have a guest. Or with a programmable thermostat, your master bedroom, you know you like to go to bed at, what, 7, 8 o'clock at night? Or was it 11, 12, 1 a.m.? Whatever time you like. You could, you could turn it into a refrigerator, walk-in freezer, an hour or two before you go to bed. And then you go in there, and it's like, ah, 70 degrees, just like I like it. And you sleep. All right. Uh, but anyway, you could control different zones at different temperatures for efficiency as well as comfort. I think you're going to see more of those mini splits. Sometimes you'll see a package unit, meaning all the refrigerants out here. No refrigerant line set takes in or out of the house. There's no indoor unit. What they do is they bring all the air outside and then they return all the air. If they retrofit a house that has a basement, they may use a packaged unit that's sitting outside. But they're rare, but you can see those. What you see a lot of in the commercial world are rooftop packaged units. So here, the refrigerants in this isolated package, in this isolated package, in this isolated package, that package could have a problem with it and go out of service. The other ones would still run, and the whole system wouldn't go down. If you're if in your house you have a problem with a compressor, your whole house suffers. But if you have a bunch of rooftop units in a commercial building, big Sam's warehouse, Walmart, whatever, big Lowe's, Home Depot type of big uh, supermarket, uh, they can service one while the other ones are still functioning. No problem. And inside this box, what they'll have is they'll have everything. They'll have basically the the evaporator, condenser, everything, they'll bring in their return, room air, they'll condition it, they'll dump it back out to supply air. They'll have the control of outdoor air to mix and they'll, they'll dump some, some room air outside so that they have some um, for uh, quality of air so that you're not always just recirculating air inside of a room. So split systems, that's the, what's in apartments, what's in homes all over San Antonio and South Texas and the majority of the United States. They have the compressor and the condenser and the condensing unit outside. They have the expansion valve and evaporator, often called the A-coil. But you, know, they, you better figure out what about the drainage of condensate on that evaporator coil. And the line set, the liquid and the suction line. Mini splits, I think you'll see more of them. And then package units mostly for rooftop commercial applications.